Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, this is your unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, you know, my dad, we're all going. I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right now and go ahead and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, your TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But definitely check out our Patreon channel because that's where you're going to find our full length interviews. And of course, YouTube membership. But y'all know this guy like to go ahead and, you know, chop up the interview. Chop it all up. Chop it up. play with you. Because you have to clip it. People don't have that attention span. Every day. So if y'all want to see that full length interview before all them chopping up he going to do, y'all got to go and subscribe to our membership package, all right? Man, hey, man, listen, man, we down here at KOD, man, in Atlanta, man. You know, we've been pulling up. We'll pull up, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we down here, man. We had to come down here and talk to this guy right here, man. Jamal Wood is in the building, man. They got a movie coming out. Uh, it's already out. Uh, yeah. Trust Nobody too. Mm -hmm. But this dude got a lot of history right here, man. I got a lot to talk about with this guy right here, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. All love, all love. Man. So, man, uh, we gonna go through it like yes. we do it, man. You already know, because I don't know if you've ever seen our show before, but I like to, as females, we love to know your history. We like to know the person. Not always about what you do, but where you came up, because I feel that your story can heal so many people, and people can hear that. Somebody could be out here going through something you went through 20 years, I don't know how old you are, but you know, <laughs> 15 years ago, and be like, man, he overcame it. I can do it too. Who, somebody who thought about committing suicide, somebody who thought about killing somebody and going to prison for life. You could change somebody because of your story. And that's one thing I always tell people. Don't be ever scared to tell your story because you can save lives. You might not know who, know who you're changing their life, but you will. Right. So, um, Just a little bit about yourself. Born and raised, you said Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, with your mom and dad? Mom and dad, yep, New York. Mm -hmm. um, they were in the same household? No. So you raised single mom? No, I'm a pops is there in and out. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Um, did growing up, did you ever feel like you know, a lot of people sit in that seat or always raised by single parents. The papa was always there, as you said, in and out, but wasn't there all the time. And it's a blessing if they were even there, because some people don't know their pop and so forth. Mm -hmm. But um, did you ever feel like growing up, like he needed to be there? You wish he was there in the household every day. Did you feel like you missed anything, or he made up with that by always being there? Nah, I ain't miss nothing. Nah, he told me he told me he know the game. Okay. My mom's told me the game, so you know, yeah, nah, I ain't miss nothing. And you you have siblings? Yeah, I got sisters and brothers. Are you the oldest, middle, I'm youngest? In the middle. Middle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're not a sport one. Nah. Okay. None of us are. Really? You know, yeah. they always say the baby baby girl or boy because I'm the last child, and they always talk about I'm sport, but I don't feel that way. I feel like I'm actually the most responsible one. Mm. So I, that's why I had to check because, you know, nah, that's what a lot of people say. None of us, well, we all work. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, what was it like, or what is it like growing up in Brooklyn, New York? Because when we think about Brooklyn, we think, or New York period, you think about fast pace, you think about the hustle, you think about people always going to go get it. It's just a certain, it's a different mentality that people have in New York compared to anywhere else. Yeah, it's boss life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Is you, you gotta take, either you gonna be I mean, you know, we, we New York, we represent the strong. We represent, um, you know, got to go get it. We, you know, ain't nothing weak about us. You, you, it's two ways you're going to go up or down. And most of the time you're going to go up if you believe in yourself and put God first. You know what I'm saying? But we're grinding. You know, we're a city that grinds. We're a city that um, we up all night, 24-7. I, I don't care what time. Bodegas mm. is open 3, 4 in the morning. Yeah, I like that. I mean, you can hit anywhere. You can eat. Anything, anytime. anytime. It's it, you know. That's crazy. Very rare that a store will be closed at three o'clock, four in the morning. It's just very rare. You'll find whatever you want to find anywhere, from Flatbush to Best Style to East New York to Brownsville to Queens to Jersey to Long Island to Staten Island to the Bronx to. It doesn't matter, man. Everything's a go. The first time you had to travel outside of New York, I don't know how old you were, but. What blew your mind about other cities compared to how New York is? Um, first time, uh, 
it had to be palm trees in LA or palm trees in Miami. Mm. You love yeah, to see the my, palm trees? No, nah, I never seen a palm tree before. So I, that was that was that was the most significant thing. Right, but when you saw it, did you you loved it? I mean, I thought it was, it was just... cool. I didn't love it, but I thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah. Man, I went up there, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I go to New York a lot. I couldn't. I'm a Texas dude, so it's hard to get used to it. But the last time I went, when I went up to do an interview with some guys, man, I interviewed Ice T in New Jersey. I'd never been to New Jersey and stayed. He told me to stay over there. I'm never staying in Manhattan again. I'm gonna be over there walking moody elbows around. Right. <laughs> I'm from Dallas. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but when I went to New Jersey, I felt like. I could move around, and when I went up to Drum, Fort Drum, because yeah. my daughter's in the military, mm -hmm. I liked it up there too. But New York is compact. Manhattan is just Manhattan. Different. No, Brooklyn. We went over there to yeah. a biggest uh, 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 a spot where right. he grew up. I went over there because it was his uh, what twenty six year anniversary mm -hmm. and that mule. Yeah, that's where I, we went. I went and seen that, and I hung out over there. I felt the energy. I was up there. I was I was enjoying myself. So. I love New York. I got partners in New York. You eating the food? You better know it. What the hell? Oh, I my mean? God. What no loves, God did? <laughs> he loves, we, we debate on that pizza all the time because he loves New York pizza. I love Chicago pizza. Chicago got cakes. I love the deep, <laughs> I love the deep dish. I got to have my deep right. dish. He loves his thin crust, right. hardly no meat on it, huge Whatever. pizza. Right. No. Yeah, that ain't explained right. It's thin crust, and to be honest with you, it, it flavor, man, it, it hit different. It ain't that water got it tasting totally different. And I'm all they both, they both, you know. <laughs> I'm not rocking with it. Dish in Chicago, and you got the slices in New York. Yeah. <laughs> that deep yeah. dish though is too big. It's yeah. bulky. You he gotta don't be like ready. like a lot of cheese. He don't like all that cheese, and you get a lot of cheese with the no, deep dish. No, man, but I, you know, you, you, I said Texas. For a reason, you did where I'm from with uh, a little flip, Neil. You rap back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, sure, you put it sure, down. I listened to sure. that verse called Will Lean called me, and yeah, I was like, man, sure. what you know about this dude? He said, Grab. I said, yeah. yeah he said, man, that. He mm -hmm. saw all of yeah, they know you. I said, man, I was checking in because I said, I got to go interview this guy. I got to know what's up with him. He was yeah. like, man, he ain't just do. He, he, they were telling me a story about when y'all was, I think it was when they had the awards and. I think 50 was with Viv Vivica and y'all might have been at Sony Studios or somewhere mm -hmm. recording, mm -hmm. but he just remembered y'all basically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> everybody, yeah, I mess with everybody. Zero, all of them. That's hard, everybody, man. Everybody. That's hard, man. I, I, I like I said, you, when I heard rap, I was like, dude, was he rapping when, when Biggie was alive? Was you rapping? Mm -hmm. So basically, you were rapping, you were from out there. Did, did people compare y'all back then before he nah, passed? We, nah, not, not, not like that. Uh -uh, not okay. Y'all style is totally different. Yeah, everybody said the nah, style is I mean, different. The, the flow is different. Yeah, 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 yeah the, the flow the is different. Flow. Things, but, mm -hmm. yeah. but you know, that was that was the pioneer, so we follow him, you know what I'm saying? How big was that, though, when you, with your career like it is, and you being the look and having the demeanor that you have, when they see, like, after he passed and you did the movie role, did you still pursue music or you didn't mess with music anymore? No nah, I still, I still, I mean, I still do music. I still, you know, it's going to be a love of my life forever. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I just chill. I just be doing that and doing films and just, you know. I don't you know. know how you find time for music because every time I look up, there's a film coming out with you yeah, somewhere. Yeah, it's work. It's just about working. Right. About being the best at what you do on your craft. And I think growing up in New York, like you're saying, had a lot to do with that for the main fact that that grind was built in you from birth coming up. Right, right. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, basically, man, like I said, when I look at you, man, that movie, that role was a big role. Was it being in the industry like you are and being in all these movies, was that movie kind of hard to get past or, or was you able to move on into other roles easily? But before you even get into that, how did you get that role? Just being gravy. Just being gravy, all the work I've put into doing that, and Puff saying, "Yo, I want you to try for big and stuff like that." Oh, okay. Just work, just work. Okay. Yeah, so, so yeah, so he seen it. He he ever did. He seen it. Yeah, he seen the vid. I mean, Mark Pitts and Wayne Barrow seen it. You know, Miss Wallace, she called the shot. So you know, she um. She seen me. She seen it. So that was good enough for me. Man, how long before that were you actually acting? No, I never did no acting. I was just rapping. Being great. Wow. So did you have to do acting classes? No, I wasn't in that world. I was just being gravy, just being an artist at that time. But yeah. then No, to get that role, like, you know, before they started shooting. Auditions and stuff. Right. Yeah, audition and we did um a biggie boot camp. Like we put our own little biggie boot camp together and we did things and I went to Juilliard and I studied and all that, but me chasing it, nah, that wasn't that wasn't in the forte. Mm. Wow. Um after that being the the gravy and then turn into this actor like 
it did it, it put a lot more exposure on you after that was a big role, mm, right? Yeah, yeah, amazing role. So how long did you have to uh, like going into it, prepare like yourself mentally to like, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to kill this role or was you like? Um, we did about six months before we started. Really? Yeah, we worked, we worked. Wow. We worked, yeah, because it was just like, you can't just go in there and just think you just, um, it's not a light switch. You can't just turn it on and off like that. Yeah. You know, turn it all the way on. Wow. You know I mean, you got to really study and do the um, uh, acting classes and voice dialect and movements and mannerisms. And I watched a lot of tapes. You did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched a lot of tapes on what hand he used, which hand, right, left, how he talked to um, Lil' Kim, how he talked to Faith, how he talked to D-Rock, how he talked to C. Like, he wore many hats at certain times. And you killed so that role. Yeah. Thank you so much, bro. Appreciate it. You it's killed that whole man. I'm, 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 I get a little. I'm a yeah. wild boy, so because no, I, I, cause I, I, I get excited because of our coach and our people, man. Like I say, for us to be able to tell our story now, yeah, we never actors, had this opportunity before. Right. It's all love. Some actors can embody a character, and some actors do the best they can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you did an amazing job. You did but great. What did um. What was the surprising? You know, we all love and know Biggie, but to do research on him, you find out a lot more. What did you find out that you didn't know about him before? Well, I'm from Brooklyn, so we already you knew already everything, right? We already tapped in. Oh, okay. And you're from Brooklyn now. If you're from Queens or how, you know, you ain't tapped. You probably be with Nas or something mm -hmm. like that. But we was already tapped in, so that was kind of like, um, I guess you would call it the cheating stage. Or, <laughs> you know, you're from there, so you know exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's just like. Going to Jamaica, you know what I'm saying? Right. You gotta know where you at. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I took I took a um my first trip to Jamaica was me and Movado. Mm. Gully God. Me and so Movado. you got all the inside. Um yeah, because I mess with I mess with Movado, I mess with Bounty Killer, I mess with Buja? Beanie Man, I mess nah, I don't, I don't know Buju. Okay. But um Beanie Man, mm -hmm. Bounty Killer, Movado. I met Datas and mm. Tivoli. I messed mm. with Foot the Hype, Trooper okay. Chalupa. You know, I'm from Brooklyn. So wow. going out there in Cassaba Peace and Kingston and all that was beautiful. I stayed out there two, three months. And Where I, did you stay? I stayed in Tivoli with Datas. Really? Datas? Yeah, big, 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 wow. big, big, big move. Because, of course, like I tell people all the time, when people ask me about Kingston, because I'm from Kingston, mm -hmm. I say a certain area like Tivoli Garden, Arnett Garden, and all those places, mm -hmm. Don't go in those places unless you know yeah. somebody. Now, we parted. I, I was with the with the boss man. We yes. Partied and we had a wonderful time. And um, at that time, it was it was it was a lot going on because you know, like I mess with Beanie Man, I mess with Movado, I mess with Bounty Killer. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the Gully, then it's the Alliance, then it's, it's three different crews. So. It's a little hectic, but yeah, you, you had know. to learn though. Yeah, it was hectic, but, <laughs> you know, I had a great time. That's good. It's That's good. good. I know when we went over there, you, you, luckily we knew yeah. somebody. We were going yeah. everywhere. Mm -hmm. you, we would was it Sean Paul's uh, bodyguard, yeah. bodyguard, and yeah, he took us to bosses. everything. Yes. Yeah, you got to know the yeah. bosses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and the way he explained it to me, I was like, dude, what am I doing with you? Something he told me. I won't say it right now, right. but it's like, why am I in here? We should be in here. Right. <laughs> but you just got to know where you at and be with the right That's people. Everywhere you go. Yeah. yeah, real talk, man. Like New York, man. Like you guys, man. The culture. That's the mecca for the rap, man. Like I always give it up, man. I'm a big uh, rock him, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Listen. Man, I ain't playing no games when it comes. Hey, I, I, I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. You know right. what I'm saying? Mark Cam, I, I, Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, loved it. Big Daddy Kane, man. Mm -hmm. Like when he was dancing there and, and them boys was with him too. I never wonder what happened to them two boys. I like talk to him. You know? yeah, <laughs> but but like they they brought that culture in, man. Like we didn't have nothing before that. You know, I'm an older cat, so I remember when it wasn't no rap. You know what right. I'm saying? So to see our people in that light when that happened, from uh, whether whether it was Basketball is my favorite sport. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Curtis Blow or whoever. It was good to have that. And then Fat Boys. You know, I remember I was in Vegas. I was living in Vegas when Fat Boys, I first seen them. I was like, man, this is dope. Because right. it was a chance for us, uh, Sugar Hill Gang, but to see our people differently right. than we ever seen them before. Mm -hmm. celebrate. Right. Yeah, yeah and, and that just happened. I right. wasn't happy with that list, but you know, hey. you know how it go. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> You know, yeah. I, I be beefing with about this stuff because it's so it's hard for me, being that I'm from 
the South, mm -hmm. when I look at and, and I hear all the, you know, from the five mics when my boy Benzino and all them was doing that, to all, it was an overlooked thing for me. Right. So I was like, man, they don't never talk about, and I'm going to say that because I've been saying it, yeah. they don't never talk about none of the pioneers down there that had some CDs back then or cassettes where you didn't have to pass a song. We had right. people the like MC. Big Mike with Rap Alive. Right. We right. had some, with Pimp Senior, like on Riding Dirty. We didn't never Scarface. skip a song. Scarface. We didn't skip a song, but you never hear them talk about that. And right. that hurts me. Like, right. come on, man. Y'all know these dudes was riding with everybody the same way. Right. Mm -hmm. So that that's the history on the music. But I'm a music head, man. Well, me, me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but even like um, our daughter, she looked to, she looked up the other day who is the... I was um, hot about that. Yeah, who is the best rapper? No, the GOAT. Who the is the goat. greatest little rapper the, alive on Google? You know who they you said on Google? Oh. Eminem. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, cause like, we was we. Was, I, I, I asked my daughter why you don't like Eminem, cause she's like, I don't like Eminem. I'm like, why? You don't even know Eminem. Yeah. She was like, cause when you look up the world's greatest rapper, you it and you Google it, it pops up. I'm like, you had to do that wrong. I, I did it. Bam, there. I said, what the hell? Mm. But it's only opinion. Like we gotta, mm -hmm. we gotta, we gotta lift our people, up, man. This thing we brought this thing in the game, man. Right. <laughs> sure did. Sure did. Sure did. But I don't like my wife because she talk about uh, uh, cool hurt every time he Jamaican. So here we go. Who started cool hurt? Because yeah, I Google like, that. I said who started rap? <laughs> because he always be messing with me with Jamaicans, and we always yeah, Jamaicans yeah, and New York. We always be talking about that. But I'm like, but well, we started. Because who, who heard it? He Jamaican, mm. so you you gotta give him his kudos. You gotta know your history, man. Because without D Nice and all them boys coming through behind him, and Special Ed and MC Shan, uh, yeah, they, they blew went, it went up. The rock. Yeah, yeah, they blew it that's up. That's how all we do it. Up. Uh -huh. That's a good talk, man. So to just let, let, I, I want to just like I say, thank you for even coming on Boss Talk One on One, man. What a boss's talk, man. man you know, it's all good. And Appreciate and I just think you guys, man, you. A lot of the stuff, the, your body of work is undeniable, man. The acting thing took off for you, kind of like what Jamie, Jamie Foxx, you know, he wanted mm -hmm. to be a singer, but the acting thing took off for Terrell him. Terrell, Texas. Mm -hmm. You, you see what I'm saying? Was singing, yep. mm -hmm. And so it's like, I wanted to do this, but God had an ultimate plan to say, no, nah, right. we're going to bring you in this way. Mm -hmm. But right. thank God that you got brought in, huh? Yeah. Right, absolutely. So how did that affect you, like, far as with the, with the acting scaling like it did? Versus the music, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's the same. It's the same format. It's okay. the same memorization really? because the same way I read my raps as I write and re read my raps, the memorization part is the same thing as I read a script. Okay. But you have to take on character though. The lyrics. It's the same thing. I'm only embodying myself the while I deliver it. Yeah, so yeah. It's the same thing. Mm. Yeah, I just like the way you, like you came across like seamlessly. You, you keep going. I go back to that Biggie role, like you. It was like you embodied that, like like even like a Ray and and Jamie Foxx, like right. you embodied that character. Right. How many mm -hmm. times people tell you like, man, you killed that? I mean, you know, they tell me a lot, but yeah. that's what the plan was. Mm -hmm. The plan was to make sure you deliver, especially me coming from Brooklyn. You got to make sure you. Uh, you had a lot on your shoulders you because of where you're from too. Yeah, you got to make it happen. What did Big Big's mama? What did, what did she say about it? She, she loved it. She loved it. She picked me, so she so she yeah. knew you could do it. Well, she didn't know. She didn't. She I didn't mean, know. she felt it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah but then, okay. So I we interviewed a lot of different um, actors, and some of them would tell us that sometimes it's hard to turn off that character when it's time to leave the studio and go home. Mm -hmm. How do you do? You are you able to turn it off, or when you get home, you still no, try to I be think, bigger during that time? Because when you're nah, filming, I think it's just me being me. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just me being me. Like. Um, I think sometimes God will pick certain people that could just, that just have, the, then nobody's the same. Mm -hmm. Or some people have the same qualities in life and um, some people are surreal with each other. Mm -hmm. Like if you think about R&B and Aaron Hall, which one, one of the greats, Aaron Hall, right. was incredible until R. Kelly came. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, it's the same thing. Like sometimes you might pick somebody who can be the signature piece mm -hmm. that, that, that'll nail it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That, that can give you what you need. You You're a music lover. For you to say that Aaron Hall, and I, this, that's my argument. I'd be I like, mean, it's a, man, it's Aaron same Hall. Thing with, um, same thing with uh, Cisco. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, K KC? KC? Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> You're a music man. <laughs> you can listen to both riffs, and you, you still can't distinguish which, which riff is better. That's it's real. It's, it's hard. hard. Some people just have that, it, that equality, because you can go from Jordan and Kobe just like that. Quickly. 
See what I'm saying? That's real, man. I, I definitely, I, I see, I see where you're coming from with it, man. Like some people just have it. Some people just have it, and and it's not like you're trying to be like that person. It's just everybody. Some some people are just some people just have the connection some kind of way. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, like yeah. the auras, but we're different. You know, Big's attitude and um, cockiness is way louder than mine's. Yeah, I'm yeah. Super mm-hmm. humble. I'm super laid back. Big is more aggressive and loud, and his movement is different from mine. I'm way less of that. I'm super laid back, and I gotta know you to open up. Big will open up from the door. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm so he got some differences, but he's Jamaican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, look, yeah. Say different. that again. Say that again. I love it. <laughs> I don't want to. I hear love it. it. So, I mean, like, like, what did Diddy say to you about that role? I'm gonna get off this role. He loved it. He, 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 he was excited. Really, yeah, yeah, he loved it. He loved it. He put me in position. Wow. Yeah. Do you guys still talk? Of course. Cool, if, cool. Anytime I can see him or, or run into him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he always always shows that love, and he don't have to. Don't have to. At one, all. <laughs> one thing that um, a lot of actors seem to dislike is when you get a role so big that when your fans see you, all they see is Biggie. Everywhere you go, they see you as Biggie. When you are trying to now elevate and go to new roles, trying to expand your acting career, how does that affect you that they still refer to you as Biggie? Well, if they don't know you, in my case, I can only speak for what I know for right. me. If they don't know you, then they do that. But I, mean, I already had a gravy history already. Gravy. Mm-hmm. I already had that way before anything else. So it was never a comparison. It was like, oh man, Gravy did his thing playing big. Mm. It was already, that's already there. So it was never like as somebody just to act trying to play big. How you get a name Gravy? And who gave that to you? Um, the street name for me staying on top of my game. Yeah, Gravy's always on top. Hey. Oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> that's real. I never thought, I was like, Gravy, how did, where did that name come from? Oh yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah. Man, I like, the, the, when you when the my like the music I will go back to that music a little bit mm-hmm. in New York they go with the lyrics they not playing with them lyrics um, if you don't have lyrics they, they don't really respect you like you got to bring it you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so did you ever was you one of them guys to battle like you know y'all big well, on battle we don't do battle rap no. No, never really? did never did nah, we ain't do no I mean, Biggie said you know when it first when he came and showed him bit, but we don't do the battle rap no we write songs and we we produce and you know that's all I thought that's all New York do. artists especially that thought kids, out like that, that was, kids nah, coming nah, up nah, I nah, thought nah, that's nah, what they all do all that put you yeah Nah, that's not the yeah. original rap. Nah, that's later on. That was that's later, later on. on. Yeah, that was oh, later on. Oh, wow. Because all the all the movies I've seen, that's how all the kids all, always But well, they talk about like Jay-Z, Battle, DMX, yeah. and all this I mean, stuff. Uh-huh. You know, Nas they might say battle raps, but really those are those are just freestyles. He was rapping, but it ain't really like no battle rap. I think battle rap nowadays is, is on a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. It's different, ain't it? Yeah, it's super different. It's, super it's more personal. beef. It's, yeah, man, it's, it it's, gets um, it gets ugly. It's very talented and very entertaining, but it can mm. be very dangerous. It can as well. be very dangerous because yeah. some of the things are being said. And I done seen dudes get punched and all I kind seen, of stuff. I seen a dude draw his hammer. See, uh, really? come on, man. Yeah, yeah, it gets it gets yeah intense. Yeah, but and then come off with a rhyme. Why drawing his hammer? I mean, he, nah, he got punched in the face. He had. Yeah, yeah, he had to draw. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought yeah, he put that, that in the lyrics. Is, is a whole nother. You know, they talk about your mama. I can't do it, man. But you're supposed to have tough skin. You know what you're going in there about. Man, I'm not doing that with y'all. Not when it's it's real. Like, if somebody knows something real on you, (laughs) and they put your whole personal business out to the world. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. Shouldn't have stepped in the game. No, you can't do me. I'm not out there. That's why you don't do it, because I can't deal with that. You just got to be comfortable in your skin. I think today, um, today's society, you have to be comfortable in your skin Mm -hmm. with who you are. That's real. So you don't have to um, front like you somebody else or be something else because the game just got a lot of goofiness going on. Yeah. But even um, social media, though, you have to have a ones, tough... They're the Exactly. That's the worst. I'm the ones that turn you into the goofy. If I got to ask you that. That's if a, you let them. <laughs> that's a good question. Like, How many times you scroll through your joint and you, look, <sighs> you see somebody goofy and be like, oh, what, what the hell just yeah. happened? What are you doing? Like, what uh-huh. are you, what are you, you know, then people were eating off of that. Like, I remember it was about five, six years ago, 
Well, ugly was the new thing. Man, I the said, uglier you are, yeah, you was fly. <laughs> shout out to Welvin. You shout out to <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Shout out to my Everybody boy was, Welvin, man. And then A Town, A Town. Yeah, the yep, boy. Was, if you had a little arm, you were no special. Disrespect, no no disrespect, disrespect, but I'm just. But I seen it. They would, you know, what I'm saying. I seen it. It wasn't the cutest things in the world, but. <laughs> They was the new it factor. That's getting it. bags. Yeah. For being I, I, was like, I ain't never seen a shit like that in my life. 22 Savage shout out. I think it's, you know what I'm it's everybody. Everybody that look. Because it's like, how can you top whatever that's crazy that's going on right now? The only way you can top it is be even crazier. Yeah, but why live for it? Man. What, what, do you, what do you gain? And that's the thing, the topic, though, since we in KOD, that's the thing with the women. Like, what do you gain by applying a fake? Ass and flake mm -hmm. Like what do you gain from that And then lately With all the killing And yeah, dying And the ass bust And stuff come out of there And you messed up And you And they're you know, addicted you don't know. I think a lot of them yeah, The like women Because that's that's a discussion That we have Very often Because of what, go, what goes on And what just happened Is the fact that He will say It's not the men Who are wanting this mm -mm. All these ladies If you talk to them Their boyfriends Are not telling them Go do these surgeries nah. It's they the woman Who will be like, like Something that I don't know. It's. I think it's media. I think it's. Um, I think it's other women. It's other women. <laughs> it's peer pressure. Because when we came up in society, our mothers will always be covered up. Mm -hmm. and Real tell talk. You that if you want to be a man, and you imagine what you can see up under this beautiful exactly. dress. Exactly. Now it's just you reveal everything, so there's no. You know what I mean? There's no nothing to look forward to. Yeah, you already see. Fake. Right. You know what I brought to my daughter's attention the other day? Because I like to watch movies from when I was growing up and stuff like that. And I, I don't remember what movie it was, but I was show, I could show her a barrage of movies and be like, look at the difference of these ladies that you see in these movies. They're not wearing the weaves. They're wearing perm, right. natural real hair. hair. Right. That's their real butt. That's their real right. boobs. That's right. their, you know, they still look nice and curvy or, you know, some of them are bigger mm -hmm. or whatever, but they're all natural. And that was the generation that we were in. It was mainly about you know this curl or that curl or whatever, but it was not about yeah, all the all fame. No, it was Everything it was about it was about that perm. Like you're like man, you got a perm. That was big back in the day. Yeah, yeah, oh, now nah, it's natural. No, you got a perm. Now that ain't nothing compared to what's going. on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, so man, I, I just really like I said when I look back at everything that we we've we've interviewed a lot of people, but you one of those guys that I really wanted to sit down with because just like I said, I love meeting the new people mm -hmm. and the people from like New York. I got people to fly in, you know. I'm mm -hmm. like, what the heck, you flying in for boss talk? They like, yeah, we got to come on that set. Right, and man, and, and we had to get out here to. Oh, we've only been doing it what two, two years? Two years. Yeah, that's good. And, and, and it's just like God blessed us with with people like you, man. I just oh, say. Man, I'm a, I ain't going to never forget you, but I already mm -hmm. was on you already. Yes, like, I don't have to meet you to be on what you're doing. You right. ain't never showed me that funny thing that you was just talking about. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, that goofy, that's a super goofy. You know, when I see you, it's like respect. Right, it's just, you know, you just got to, um, I think every man and woman should have a character that they stand on. That's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's real. Goofy shit is just, uh, it affects our kids. You know, I got a daughter. Yeah, How that's old hard. is she? Um, she's 15. Oh, girl. So, you know, that's, Son my age. Whole, that's my whole world. So at the end mm. of the day, being goofy ain't cool when kids, mm -hmm. like the John, uh, John Morant thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Kids see you and they look up to you and you, you know, you holding a gun, you think that's gangster. It's not gangster. Right. Man. You know what I'm saying? What's gangster is that you made it to the NBA. That's gangster. Mm -hmm. Man, what's really gangster is that's take care of your daughter. Fuck. Well, yeah. <laughs> No, but not, that is real that's gangster. gangster. That's gangster, but for uh, me personally, I take it to the next level and be like, it's more gangster when you do that and know how to handle the money that you get because yeah. so many people get that money and blow it, and when you get out, you broke. You're working at that's Home real. Depot after that because you ain't got the money. That don't make no sense. Man, so, you know, I, I think I agree with you, but when you're 20, 21, and they hand you that bag, I remember when I was 21, if they'd have had your boy, I hadn't met you then. They'd have had me that bag back then in 2021. Nah, it, it'd be you gonna blow it. I'm gonna act up because I because I'm 2021. 20, but when yeah. I turn 31, 41, you start to see me accept. That's why people when you my, a lot of my partners get out of penitentiary, they be like, man, he showed man that nigga changed. That nigga done got old. He was gone for seven years. You know what I'm saying? He was gone for 10 years. And so they don't understand. They looking at how he used to be. But this man that had to go through 10 years of time, and when he come home, no, nah, he don't smoke no more. Maybe he drank a little bit, but he don't do this no more. Right. 10 years a long time. People going to change if you're in the world for 10 mm -hmm. years, man. And it ain't really about changes. It's about just being smarter. Maybe being he got very smarter. Smart. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Age comes with wisdom. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, age come with wisdom. Mm-hmm. I want to get into this movie, man. Trust nobody, too, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I was, and he was in part one. He was too. in part one as well. Of course. Like, what made you? What made you get into this role? What was it that stuck out to you to say, "I'm gonna be About in this"? this yeah. Well, you know, any any street roles, I love street roles. You know what I mean? Anything to do with the streets, because I lived it. So by experience, you know, best is, experience is best known by experience. You know, mm. you've been through it. Um, you can't act like you know something and you ain't never did it. So it's just, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, but um, I think more for me was Steve O putting it together. My man Steve O doing his shout business, out, putting that together. Um, working in Milwaukee, that was different for me. I yeah, wanted, I wanted to see the coach. I wanted to see Milwaukee how that was. How long did it take to film it? Um, it took us about two weeks. Oh, that's oh, real oh, quick. About two weeks, yeah. Okay. Yeah, about two weeks. You know, we got to the business. Um, but it's long hours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might get up like nine in the morning and work to about three or four. Wow, mm. so it's long hours. It ain't, you know, I mean, it ain't sweet. sweet. It ain't sweet at all. Nah, it ain't sweet. But um, you know, we have fun. Me and working with Fat Boy, I already knew a Fat Boy, so working with him, that was good. The chemistry was good. Bianca was good. Everybody, you know, say when you got a good cast, it's just gonna come out good. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? And the storyline is good. Man. Being in acting, sorry, baby, but ahead, being in acting, because there's a lot of young kids that also watch the show and stuff like that who might be aspiring to become an actor or actress. Um, what is the most difficult thing about being an actor? Wow, I wouldn't know. Because everything is just so easy to you. It's just gravy. I, I wouldn't know that part. I wouldn't know how to be. Um, I wouldn't know. Nothing. Nah. Some, like I said, some people got it, some people don't. Um, or what's the thing that they need to know that um, would be beneficial? Because I know I would I would suggest for anybody to do their research. Number one, definitely do your research. Check out all the paperwork because you well, have you people. Well, well, you, well you, you ain't gotta do that. No. No, you just gotta try it out. Because I never did my research. You did. You just jumped I full force in. Something. So I can't say that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, what I can say just believe in God. Number one, I got I gotta stress that. Definitely. Believe in God. Most number definitely. one. And then believe in yourself, you know mm. what I'm saying? And then just go after it. I could say that, but I can't tell you um, homework and all that and everything. It's, it's almost like telling a child that um, you have to go to college. Mm. College doesn't work for everybody. It's right. been proven. Right. Um, like my daughter, I want her to go to college, of course. I want her to give it a shot. Mm-hmm. But if it don't work, she know already. Hey, you ain't Daddy gotta, support her regardless. Yeah, it don't, yeah, but let's just try it though. Exactly. Let's try it. You know what I mean? But if it don't work, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I could. I, I mean, you gotta believe in yourself. You gotta take a chance. You gotta risk it all. Does she say she want to be acting like you? Oh, she loves acting. Yeah, she loves acting. She loves swimming. She loves doing a, you know, a bunch of girly things. So that's a good thing. But I guess I'm tell people, you just gotta go for it, man. It's gotta be in your heart. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Go for it. Because if you don't, that's why I say you know trying is winning. Yeah, Some yeah. Some people don't even want to try. No, you're mm-hmm. right. You don't even want to try. Like, you want to tell you about something that ain't even going to go try. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. That, that, that daughter thing is hard for me. I got two daughters, and that boy thing, I can't deal with none of that. I never could with my oldest daughter. I can't, but I just don't do it well. I don't want to meet. I didn't meet nobody until I met her husband. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like no, I just no don't play no stuff. games, man. Right. Like, when I right. see you, I know already what I think about it, and I'm not. I'm going to go all the way out. So right. I don't want to meet nobody. I don't want to know you. I right. want Right. I'm not doing none of that. All I want to do is be there for, and I tell her, man, hey, look, you go in the brown, yeah. you, you go up here, you call me, I'm on the flight quick, right. and it's, it's, I'm going all the way out. That's what you mean. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she more like listen to about all this stuff. I be like, because I don't at the same hear time, it. like I yeah. always feel like um, well, no, no, I gotta ask him to, what he thinks too. Need to, yeah, I'm going. Uh, oh. But you need to listen to them. You need because they gonna have a boyfriend or a crush or whatever, regardless. And I just don't want any girls to be trying to go behind nobody's back to try to do stuff. I prefer mm-hmm. for you to come to me. I've been there, done that, did a whole bunch of different stuff. Yes, your friends can tell you stuff, but they still young too. Right. You need to be able to come to me. I'm not your best friend. Right. I'm I'm your mom, but I'm still your friend, right. so-called. You know That's what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. So I need for you to be able to open up to me and tell me stuff. He can be the hard one in certain cases, and I'll be the hard in certain things. We right. have to have Absolutely. a balance. Right. What, uh, how are you? Do you want to meet anybody? You don't want to meet nobody. I want to meet. I want to meet him. You want to meet him? Yeah, because I need to know where he at. In case I gotta see him. See. Is it so? Is it a thing where you've had to meet somebody yet? Nah, she. I mean, fifteen. She got, she got a little. They be having them young. Crush. She got a little um, 
at that, like for me and her, she she still she don't really know. Like they don't really know what love is or, or anything like that. I just go with the flow. Yeah. Like I love pretend to 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 to, to assume. You know what I mean? She know what it is, but I always tell her. I always keep keeping one hundred with mine. Like yo, it's gonna be a million boys in me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's gonna be stages. This one is not gonna last longer than you know mm-hmm. this stage. And that. I'm not saying that it can't happen. Sometimes you might meet one that be there forever, but that's just all about the structure. Who's to say I'm I'm gonna look, live in Atlanta forever? Or I'm gonna live here. Like you know, certain things tear you apart and move away and meet different people. And you get to school, you meet different. That was the whole part of taking her out of New York. Yeah, yeah. Taking her out of Brooklyn and let her get with other other students and classes where it's an Indian kid and a Russian. Mm-hmm. You know, to keep her diverse, diverse. mind yeah, open yeah. instead of being in a class with just thirty black kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, just, yeah. She need to see other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a better thing. Not saying it's wrong. But I wanted to see other things. I, I think you did see, it right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Other other ethnic groups and just mix. Don't get into that world of race. Don't get into none of that. We all the same. You know that's what real. Mean? So that's it. But, you know, right now, 15, she ain't really. She ain't into that. I mean, like, I, you know, I always be loyal to my son, my father. So she, it's certain things her mother going to know more than exactly. me. Exactly. There you go. So I guess I, we on the same page. Yeah, yeah my father. I mean, she's not going to give me the whole shebang. You know what I mean? She's gonna do things that I know she's doing already. That's yeah. the but I'm, balance. I'm smart though. I'm not. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not. You know, I know you out there doing other things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So go ahead. Just you know, respect me enough to tell me if things go wrong. That's all I want. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Yeah, That's don't, it. Don't fall in love with a nigga putting his hands on you. I ain't, fit, I ain't trying to hear that. See, I see. And women are. To- I'll be the one who be sitting there saying, "Okay, these are the clues you look for. If you see this happen, head right. this way. If you." You know what I mean? Because right. I feel like you you need to prepare them for, for certain things because certain sure? things will happen. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to always be there all the time because they're going to leave your house and be gone. You, they need to know what to look for, the telltale signs. Uh, but that's the mother part. You know that's what I mean? the mother part. I don't part. discuss um, her sacred spot and all that with the stuff. You know, I let mm-hmm. the moms handle that. Yeah, I yeah. Just, I just handle the finance and security. That's that's pretty yeah, much that's, that's it. That's it. You know I mean? now, and if if that security needed, you know, I'm coming right. and I'm coming with everything <laughs> I got. Right, I got to. I got to. It's got to. Blood. It's just, it is what it is. So what is it about um, trust no one? Um, trust or, nobody. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Part two. Um, part two and part one because some people might not have even seen part one. Yeah, you got to see part one to catch up to the trilogy. Exactly, because we did mm-hmm. sit down and watch both, and you know. I don't want to tell nothing for, to spoil any spoilers and stuff like that, but... Got a lot of twists. Yes, yeah, got a lot of twists. A lot of things that I didn't expect. Um, I didn't even think that you were coming back in a part two. I was shocked when I heard that there was a part two because I thought that, you know. Right. So, but um, it was a lot of surprising. I love Shay in first part. Mm-hmm. You know, I wish I could have seen her in again, part two right, again because right, I love right. I loved your chemistry with her on, right. on, on the film, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, things happen. Things happen <laughs> exactly. Right. You know, but what what is Steve it? Question. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it about it that um, you would tell people who are watching like the reason why they have to go see this show? Because it's it's dope, and if you're from Milwaukee, you got to go see it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, as you know, there was no avenue in Milwaukee for this this platform until Steve O and Swift started doing it. Mm. So you know, you want to get down with the get down, you got to roll with what's what's hot. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just like we did in New York. Like we 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 didn't know what was going on until we seen the Rough Riders or we seen the Rockefeller Ooh, or we that. seen the Murder Inc. Or mm-hmm. we seen those are the things that kept us in tune with is other things and other platforms we can do. Yeah. By following the blueprint. Mm-hmm. So it's the blueprint, especially for Milwaukee. You know what I mean? So you gotta go see it. And it's a good film. It is. Do you yeah. think there'll be a part three? We already shot it. Oh, what? Really? Stay all out of here, man. No. Steve won't be mad at me for saying that, but we already, <laughs> we already way ahead of everybody. Wow. Yeah, but don't stay stay focused on part one <laughs> and two. You know, get part one and two, you're not gonna understand three. So just stay focused on one and two. So there's a lot of twist. Always. It's a movie. You see, I'm that, that person that when I watch movies, my daughter will always crack up about me because I'm like, oh, I know what's going to happen. And I'll tell her, and it normally always happens. Even right. if I can, I can sometimes see the twist coming, mm-hmm. and, I can, and I'm always on point see, with, with it. See, with these, when you try that, we already made sure we thought like that, yeah. so it won't be that. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, when, when I seen you in the bed, 
the blood on your chest. I was like, man, Whew. I'm like, happen. it's tough. It's tough when things happen. Yeah, when things happen, I was like, man, and and it just just to see you in that element, cause you know, I really like I said, I, I was like, man, in the street, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like it's happen. money involved. It's it's action. It's it's everything that you're looking for when it come down to a field. I think one of them is. Um, all of them have messages. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I think the the first one gives you family values of how exactly. families be the worst enemy. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like you may think that you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. My brother, my right hand, mm -hmm. my sister, my right hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But sometimes it's not like that. There's a lot of people that live life like that. Like jealousy is serious. Is a serious business. You know what I'm saying? And inside the household. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But it do. But yeah. it showed both because then your other brother was not like that. You see right. what I mean? So it's not just showing one side. It showed both sides. That right. you do have some people who are loyal, mm -hmm. but you do. But you do got some <laughs> sisters that are very jealous. Right. Let me ask you this. Like being in Milwaukee versus the culture in New York and, and, and coming into that whole realm, what similarities did you see when it come down to just street and hood and just the way we are? It's different everywhere. Yeah, everywhere definitely. Everywhere it's different. There's no, um, it's the same structure. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't outdo the structure of being in the hood. But it's always different little entities. Like in Milwaukee, it may not be every block is outside. Like they're not outside like that at night. Yeah. Like three or four in the morning. When you in New York, everybody's mm -hmm. outside. It still look like a common all day thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in well, they're not outside like that. Like every block you go to turn, everybody, no, they're not outside like that. I mean, they kill them like that, but they're not outside like mm -hmm. that. And that's probably one of the reasons they ain't outside like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, Milwaukee that bad? I'm Milwaukee. Milwaukee they get bad. out. Because when I think bad. about bad, I think about like Chicago. When we went to Chicago, I hear it's about same Chicago. Level, same same day. level. Same really? Level. Yeah. That's why they all, all three of those is right connected together. You got Detroit, you got Milwaukee, Detroit, and Chicago. Mm. It's only three hours, three hours. That's right. It's oh, all right wow. there. It's all the same. Yeah. Cause we never did go through Milwaukee. We went to Chicago. We went to Detroit. Detroit. I gotta so go to Milwaukee. We saw all of that. I, yeah. I'm gonna go cause uh, I got people over there, man. Yeah. Uh, and and to be honest with you, I've been growing my base over there. It's time Boston got to pull up in Milwaukee. Yeah. I got people in that thing. I'm gonna got pull Steve up, man. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it up, man. Hello, with Steve. Oh, you good? I'm good. Check in. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask you about that. Yeah, what do you think about, about to the check that. in? Like, yeah, you gotta, you, you know, is it important? Um, well, it's the way you look at the word check in. Exactly. Some people get the word. See, from New York, we take check in as extorting. Mm. So Correct. When you tell us check in. We be like, nigga, the fuck you talking about? Who you talking to? <laughs> because the way you saying it, we don't understand that slang. You saying check in? That sounds like extort. <laughs> sounds exactly so, like extort. You know, you know what I mean? But when you break it down, and somebody's saying, "Yo, man." I think you just need to move around the city with some some other some other folks to keep it, you know what I mean? Cause we love we love to get active too. Yeah. So we don't never feel like any state we go to, I don't care where we at. We you know, just being from Brooklyn, New York, we active too. We always gonna feel. That's why you always see DJ. Oh, Brooklyn, New York. Cause we didn't really give a fuck where we at. We gonna get active just as anywhere you at. And everybody feels like that. Everybody. Every Detroit. Feels like that. Mm. Milwaukee feels like that. Chicago feel like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. whoever, you know what I mean? You just gotta be smart and just embrace whatever you embrace. Like me, I checks in. Yeah. And that's yeah. not a, about extorting. And nobody extorting me. I just check in because there's a, there's a respect. The same way if somebody came and they came to New York and they need to move around. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'll let them know how to move around. Like you can't you can't come to somebody's hood and and act like you know what's going on there or set up there or just act like you the guy in, in, in their hood. Like it's, Cause it's they gonna check you. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, see this, that's the thing about the checking. <laughs> see, once again, if you like, well, if you're we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't want to adapt well to somebody telling us it's gonna check us. Like we supposed to, oh, you gonna check us so we gonna run or we gonna move or we, nah, we ain't them niggas. We flying into your city. We, you know, we gonna fly into Milwaukee. We gonna fly to Detroit. We gonna fly to Chicago, and it is what it is. I, like we, we Brooklyn, New York. We New York. It don't matter Bronx. It don't matter. We coming wherever you at. You especially if you the one with the mouth. 
Girl, you you coming with it? Because we just come on, man. You can't do that. No, nah, you can't. You can't say like Dallas. You can't just Perfect pull example. up. Example. You can't just be like, yo, you know, how, picture a Dallas nigga going to somewhere and somebody telling him, hey, man, you can't just pull up. No, nah. like, he don't want that shit because he feel the same way at home. Well, yeah. You can't come to my home running through these streets acting like you. That's gonna cause that kind of energy. You get right. what you put out. Right. Now, if you right. tell me I'm cool and I come, and because I'm going to talk to people. Like, when I go to New York, I got Junebug or I got Conrad, you know, from Queens and Brooklyn. Right. And they're going to be like, E, right. he here. They're going to pull up. Now, that ain't checking in. Now, they're my just, people. Right, see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the same way I feel. <laughs> it ain't about checking in. It's just I got people everywhere. Yeah. I got a million niggas in Chicago. I yeah. Got a million, and they respect it. Yeah. Like, I don't move around with nothing that's un. un I don't move around with. Uncertified niggas. That's real. As Every it, nigga I move around with is certified. certified. And if, Jay Prince taught me that. He, that's real. Me? Like when I first went to Houston, Jay Prince was the first one to take me to Houston. Mm. And I stayed two months with him. We wow. had a ball. Kicks it. Wow. Oh man, he showed me the game. He showed me the cows with the, with the, the, <laughs> the, the horses, the, uh, and Angus meat, and the, the, um, the rap a lot on the back of the cow's ass. Yeah, already. <laughs> he showed me how, you know, how to make that money and, and do this and do that. And then he showed me the compound. Then he introduced me to his son. Brandon, and yeah. And both his sons. And I messed with him. You know Junior. what I'm saying? And mob ties, man. I love them. And it, it, was, and it, was, it was all love. Always. That's Every real. Time I, and I check in. I, I, when I get in, I holler. I call stay down. I get my sandwiches, get my food. <laughs> I run through the city. I put my rap a lot chain on he used to give me. And I run through the city. Dang So you how did you mean? end up First meeting Like even linking With Jay uh, Prince And the Wyclef Studio Wyclef Studio Yeah okay. Wyclef Studio I forgot who else Was recording that day But it was in Wyclef Studio And Jay Prince was there And I okay. was in there Seeing Wyclef Doing something And Jay Prince was there And I was like Oh oh, gee What's happening He like Hey what's up I'm like Man I know who you is You ain't got to say nothing It's an honor You know what I mean We Very kicked big. it And he liked my mouthpiece that's mm -hmm. real. Most That's real. Don't talk to him a certain way, but yeah. I was admiring him like the OG. Like, That's real. You know what I mean? I grew up off you. Yeah, like, yeah, this, yeah. This, yeah. This, That's the way it's supposed yeah, to be. Because you know it's said, real. I said, I, said, I said some crazy things to him. You know what I'm saying? That he made me feel like, yo, you crazy. <laughs> I'm like, you come out there. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was, I was like, give me the blueprint, man. Show me what's, you know, that, what I got to do. Man, and, and, and it's like I say, I'll I, I never forget that song that, uh, uh, my boy DJ Quick, when he said, I went here and it's just like Compton. He named it everything because it reminded him. It's something in the hood and dealing with the structure mm -hmm. that'll remind you to say, hey, man, listen, you got to, it can be the same anywhere you go. Oh, so you need to make sure. LA too, like my, um, Baron Davis. Okay, okay. Baron Davis, the big homie. Baron Davis, Terminator, um, Term, uh, um, J Rock, Top Dog. That's Big hard. U. That's hard. That's my Big that's U, my, shout that's out. That's my guys. Mm -hmm. Whack 100. That's Whack 100. God. See, me, I don't never have. One of the things that's so similar about me and Big is is, is the, the relationships. Big love. on relationship and love, love. They love gravy. Like, I love them. Yeah. So it's always, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's always. It's so always anywhere I can go, man. You know what I mean? But like, that's a gift, gravy. Movado, hitting Bounty Killer, hitting Beanie Man, but hitting uh, 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 anybody. I get, I get the top guys, but all my guys are the top guys, like I told you before. Yeah. The affiliation is what makes it greater. Right. But you, the you thing know, I don't understand how important networking and keeping those relationships but are. It's important. The company you keep is super exactly. important. It's super, but one thing about it, everybody can't do what Gravy just said. Right. Everybody, because some people you. don't know how to do, build a relationship. Yeah, yeah. They don't know they. You. Exactly. Right. Like if you grew Be up genuine. a certain way, if your parents grew you up a certain way, you're going to move that right. whether you like it or not. So a lot of times people have like how many problems have, communicating. How many niggas you can have in your house with a million dollars on the table and come back in the same million? Don't sit there, there. Mm -hmm. right? That's or real. just a little structure. Like Steve-O might say, yo, come out to the crib. And I'll be like, all right, where you at? And he'll be like, yo, I'm getting ready to run to the store, but my wife did. Yeah. 
not happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll meet you at the store. There you go. And I'll, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's real. But that's that's just that's protocol I live by. Every nigga right. don't live that's by. That's what I was saying. So that nigga's part. gonna go straight to the crib <laughs> and be that way. Be and doing shit. That all kind of you know stuff. What I'm saying the wife look like oh he be looking at me funny. He'll tell him Steve. Hey, he was. I don't want to be in that position. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even I put myself in sh that. You shouldn't even put yourself there. Yeah. I'll wait till you come out the store. I'll go over just to the store. When I leave, you leave. That's real. No way a nigga gonna be in your crib. You leave the crib, and he's staying in your crib when you leave. It's no. Just, it's just protocol, man. It's so broken that it need to be reinforced. It's we just, need to get back to it. Oh, man. And I think we can do it with the way you speaking now and the oh, way I am. Goofy niggas you yeah. can't do <laughs> Yeah, but you got the circle. The, you building that. Then in there. Yeah, I they can't let them in, man. Why they them all Not letting shit. them in. Right. Not letting them in. I can't right. even deal with them. But you can feel that spirit, though, when you get around certain people. Well, some niggas is good actors. Mm. <laughs> No bullshit. <laughs> You're right. Some niggas, some niggas is great oh actors. God damn. I didn't see it coming. I didn't see that. But these niggas be on fire right. for foolishness. He ain't lying. Niggas go the distance. Niggas he gonna like movies. Play, he gonna I wait you out. certain movies where a guy betrays a woman. He been do, trying to do that forever. Yeah, yeah. He might go the whole five, four, six, seven years till he reveal the truth. <laughs> like, finally, bitch, I got your money. I hate you. <laughs> you be like, God. You know because what I'm you know it's sneak attack. Yeah, like you, they can play go good distance. actors. Nipsey Hussle, man, man. Mm -hmm. he, for the whole time, mm -hmm. man. I know and knew him. Hey, but Nipsey, my boy, like so I met him. Jealous like jealous of motherfucker now. That made a lot of people check the people around them. You tr you you can you can't see it until some mistake happens. That's the only bad part. Until something go wrong, I, I still I still can't yeah know if he gonna be foul or not until it happens. Yeah, and just I just hope that when it happens, it's not too late. But I think because of situations I've been in in life, being in some of those hard situations, it made me have trust issues, bro. Like I knew mm -hmm. that people didn't love me when I faced life changing situations where I could have lost my life and I was sitting down for a second or something. It taught me, man. Like, don't believe everybody, cause they ain't gonna be there for you. And therefore, Trust a lot of the stuff nobody. just happened. Boom. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> they ain't exactly. gonna be there for Trust you. Nobody. And they don't really care. And it's and that's sad. And you know what? But it's good though. You can trust you. But let me tell you something. True story. And I just thought about this. When I was on lock, I got trust no one but God on my back. Mm. That's what's on my back. <laughs> that's my because I ain't trust nobody, no, you nothing, you, bro. Best, you the best to you. Yeah, so yeah. Trust you. So in this, in this, and we go back to the film a little bit. Like, like in this film, like, man, you had you, you know, you had some love scenes in there. You know how hard is them love scenes? But you know no what I'm sex saying? scenes Those though. Easy. <laughs> but no, but no sex scenes though. <laughs> No, nah, we ain't really get what to that. What the hell is y'all trying to do, boy? Man, we, we ain't doing that. Yes, we getting like, to that? Some, like some some power, like some ghost. No, nah, like y'all not gonna get all that, man. Nah, y'all get, get that serious? We going well, we didn't get that serious yet. Oh, sorry, but it's coming. <laughs> we it's will coming. we coming? <laughs> so take how you want to. We will so, get to that. But but just doing those scenes though, those are easy for you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It, is it easy yeah. to come out of character? No, I'll be in character. <laughs> All the way in character. Yeah, I'll be in character. But it seemed real. I mean, it's my job. It's my it's job. It's real, though. It's yeah. professional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but how do you keep it professional? Because so many times we see actors, big actors have been Columbus doing it for years. Columbus told us about that. Yeah, Columbus said. Years. Big example, they might be doing it Mr. For real, and no, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. They might be doing it for real. They fell in love. Up, you see what I mean? They fell in love. They ended up falling in love, so getting married eventually it's because it's of that. Magic is just about how far you tap in. <laughs> <laughs> how far you tap in. <laughs> You know, because them love scenes is hey, serious. Because yes. you're building a relationship with this person, so you can have that chemistry on film. Right. That's what it's all about having great chemistry. But, right. But you know, Columbus, when he was on our show, he told he was like, "No, nah, I, I hate her. I messed up one time. I ended up being he, he like he ended up being with Britney Spears. He was like, man, I messed up. I, I shouldn't have went all the way, and they ended up you know being together. He was like, I, got, I shouldn't have did it because it kind of messed him up far as on the on the work they were doing together after mm -hmm. that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you got to still work with this person if y'all decide it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? If you go too far. So it's mm -hmm. just a lot of relationships is hard anyway. Now you got the cameras on your relationship and you don't like a person? That would flip things out. Mm -hmm. 
So let me just ask you, man. Like, what's what what's next, man? What like what 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 do you want to do? I, I'm I'm for the wind it up, like man. I'm just getting started, really. I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just having fun, man. Like the way I went, the way I uh, ran through my rap career. I having so much fun, like 25 years running through the game, meeting so many people and enjoying. Same way I'm gonna treat the the, the acting game. Wow. I'm just starting, man. I'm fresh out. How many Fresh films you have film. under your belt right now? Because every time I look it up, I see, like, a lot. Oh, I wouldn't know. Probably 30, 40, John. I don't know. And how long ago did you start? How, how long ago did Biggie come out? What year did that? 2009. 2009. So you've only been doing this since 2009. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I ain't really, really pushing it like I'm pushing it now. In the beginning, it was just, you know, oh, this is new. This is, wow. But I still was trying to rap and be crazy. So what made you? So what made you? Um, what changed your mind? What made you like? I'm gonna push this now. Well, I ain't decided to push nothing until my daughter was fully, fully grown. Where I felt like I took off from the game because I wanted to be a great father. Mm. So until to she was there. right, I ain't care about nothing else. I just wanted to make sure she right because that time I can't get back. That's true. They can't put in that time. Like you know, you got a lot of people who uh, jeopardize that time. And you, you know, the money ain't everything. People lose that. You know, people go for the money over the, the well-being of the child, and you, you can't rescope that. I think it's very important. That's one thing I've always told him. Because when I lost my dad, it's like a light bulb came on, and I realized that because I have a lot of memories with him. Because I was a tomboy growing up, I used to go fishing, hunting, do everything with him. Mm-hmm. And I, when I lost him, I realized that as much as like America makes you want to grind and work all the time to make a better life for your family, but by doing so, you you might not always be there to build those memories with your children. So that's I, on that's on you. Yeah, you got to sacrifice. Exactly. Exactly. Every, everything in life is a sacrifice, and for for her, I will sacrifice anything. So, so I did that. And now mm-hmm. she's fully aware of what I am, who I am, and now she's chilling. So Me. now I'm going back to work. That's real. Mm-hmm. Top three uh, uh, actors of all time. Top three. Mm-hmm. Top three. In my opinion. Yes. Yeah, it's your opinion. And Dead or alive. Mm-hmm. Dead or alive. Yeah, that's, that's hard, hard, man. Well, first, I just got to be super respectful and go with Cindy Portier. Okay, mm, man. I R. love me some Cindy Portier. Yeah, no. And then I got to go number two. I got to do Denzel, of course. That's mm-hmm. my guy. And then number three, I got to do... It can be any gender, too. Don't yeah, I just nah, be nah, men? Nah, oh, this couple, here we I'll go. I'll give you a couple of genders, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to go... They're your favorite it's three. Cindy Portier. Denzel. I'm going to go Denzel. And then I'm going to go... Um, Jamie Foxx. That's my guy. That's real. That's a hard. That's but a hard. I just, that's just, that's, that's a hard just top three. three. Yeah. Because then I still got my um, Robert De Niro. That's me. Me and you own it. That's yeah, exactly. Is that know, me? Robert De Niro. George Clooney. I still got my other sides. You know what I mean? So. Wow. Plenty. 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 What well, uh, top three artists as far as music all the time? Because you, you both. I can't even really get top five. No, no we do top three. three. I need three. Top that's three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> top five was hard. <laughs> no, uh, top, top three. three. Yeah. You better cut some people off. That I mean, top three. We just can't cut off, though. But top if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go on. Um, I'm going to go big. Pocket Nines. That's mm. hard top three. But that's that's the new era three. You still got mm-hmm. Rock Cam. Yeah, you Kane. got oh yeah, you got LL and them, they all right. back there. You see what I'm saying? So That's hard. So it's it's the genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genre. But it's it's not easy, but the, the, nah. but that the one you named was hard, nah, bro. My three for me, growing up, I'm nineteen seventy five. I'm going big, I'm going pop, I'm going Nas. Mm. Wow, and that's huge, bro. I mean, that, that's that's what it is. Yeah, that's huge, cause man, big man. Listen, man, I didn't even, I was not even like, a, a, I'm a top notch Biggie fan. Mike Jones came on my show, man, that's and he boy. shut me down when he came. He told me why the nigga got so excited, and he was like, cause he made it good for big dudes to be, feel confident, right. and he started yeah, yeah. talking about it and Absolutely. just really pretty much pouring out yeah. how much he changed his it made career. Think differently. And I was like, damn, yeah. man, I'm, 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 I'm scared. I'm just barely escaping the surface. <laughs> Nigga, I, didn't, I ain't thinking deep enough. Mike right. was like, no, nah, it's, it's like, e, man, like he really yeah. that guy. He's a comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Man, confidence. that changed the game, man. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I had another question for you. One more question. Okay. Is, the first time you saw yourself, because you know, y- y'all go to the premiere and act 
actress see yourself on the big screen? The first time you saw yourself on the big screen, what did you think about your acting? That's me. I don't know. I never looked at it like that. Mm -mm. So how did you look at it the first time you watched it just on the me, screen? Just me. Just me doing me. Really? Yeah, just me doing me. I kind of know mom, why I my did. My mom's kind of put it in a in the perfect way before she um before she left this world. My mom was just like um, so she was crying. So I'm like, what are you crying for? She's just happy for you know for the premiere and all mm -hmm. that. But she like you know you up there, and the world think you're big, and when you're just being you. Mm. So it didn't hit me at that time, but it hit me now. Like you you know what I mean? Like sometimes you just you just you. You are just what you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? You ain't even got to sell that. Ugh. That's just about you you being in who you are. It's already written out for what you're supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Like I, agree. I tried to be somebody I'm not. I'm just me and you fit the, you fit the description. You, you, do, you know what I mean? That's just your I theory. see why you say you're so laid back. You're not a critical thinking person because a lot of people who, um, especially with your first time acting, would see that would be like, Man, I could have done that better. You know, like really just right. dissecting the whole film for your first right. time. I'm like, okay, I need to start working on this. I need to start it's working like on that. It's like Jay Z say, you know, one of my favorite artists, Jay Z, when he when he say, um, well, if you got another one, make another one. That's like what he, he said. said. Like, you say, you comes at wrong. me like I ain't that guy. Mm -hmm. But if I ain't the guy, then do do another like me. That exactly. boy said, I heard because because he done did, did it. He done did it. He done right. <laughs> made hoe say, okay, so <laughs> make another hoe. They weren't playing the day role. Right. <laughs> so they, that's how I feel with me, with films. Like, if you could do another be gay. Hey, you know what man, saying? that's real. The, numbers, the numbers is different. Yeah. So, like, if I'm talking to somebody and they're like, yo, I want to book you, and I'm like, yo, it's 30,000 or 35 or whatever. They're like, well, why, why, why? And then do research. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because if you could do it with somebody else that's on my left, then you'll make the, the money. But the money going to be different. The money gonna so be different. You know it's the money gonna yeah. be different. So let yeah. me get mine and get about your business. <laughs> do whatever you say you're gonna do and make it better. Really? Because it's then it ain't nobody really thinking of how to really use me. A lot of dudes just shoot me, but they don't really use me like they could use me. Marketing purposes, I can get you to where you wanna get to to get to the bag. That's real. But ain't nobody ever think about using me except Steve O. Because you're not really understanding the red tape you're gonna go through to push any other artist or any other actor you want to go to to get them on an uh, interview with anything, Breakfast Club, this one, that, this is 50. You can go ahead and push all you want to push, and you're going to be paying. That's real. With me, you're going to get right in there. Oh, yeah. There ain't nobody oh, yeah. who ain't going to interview me for free. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Man, everybody going to be you. Me, oh, man, it's going to be great. We got costs. We got charge. I got the call. You can't charge. I got the man. man. Come on, <laughs> man, stop. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a key for the new... You gotta pay Steve O now because I done gave you free game. You gotta, you gotta, pay, you gotta pay him to get me to move through your, your junk. But yeah. be smart. That's Hello. it, man. Would you ever do any other genres? Because I know a lot, yeah, a lot of love, your genres I, usually in the street. I do everything, man. It, 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 man, it's so funny, man. And this is a touchy situation, but I'm a real nigga, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but um, one of my homies was like, yo, would you ever play a gay dude? Uh. I'm like, damn, homie, what's happening? And he like, <laughs> Because if somebody came to you and said, they'll give you $20 million, I'm like, yo, you know what? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. You Shit. should be like, how gay? Nah, it ain't really about how gay. Yeah, because it's going to be. Friends. I got, nigga, I had a. a no, LA but I'm talking friend. about, would you, like, because will there be romantic scenes? Hey, man, listen, you could have stand ins. Yeah, you know, you're right. contractual. You can have somebody you're standing right. and do whatever you you're right. you claim Not you want to do. You right. know what I'm saying? That ain't me. Right. But you know, you got to go do what you got to do. I, you know, I ain't got no homophobia. You dig? Mm -hmm. I'm a real nigga. But I mean, you know, twenty million. Hey, we're gonna have to think about this. <laughs> a lot of, gonna have a to lot of people say a lot of things when that twenty yeah, million said, ain't on the yeah, table. Yeah, they say a lot of things. <laughs> but when that but twenty they, million on the they, table, there's a lot of niggas out here saying a lot of things, doing it for free. Free. Look out now. <laughs> Got a little yeah, penis, real. A little penis on his forehead. Like, <laughs> doing it for free. Doing it for free. Liar. Liar. They, and yeah, they ain't yeah, got caught yet. Right. Then when they come out, they be like, damn. Right. You should you? at least got twenty million for that. <laughs> Shit. So, man, you know, so, hey, that's a crazy subject, man. Yeah, I'm cool with who I am in my skin, So, man. would you wear a dress? Oh, man. 
See, I thought Jamie we Foxx did it. Jamie Foxx did it. Would you dress up and um, wear a dress? Jamie Foxx did what? He used to play yeah, Wanda. Wanda. And which one? In, in, I in, in, no, in uh, uh, Living Color. Will Smith in, living, in, in, no. in living Color, yeah. he played Wanda. Oh, that's 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 comedy. So, oh, but he's still in a dress. dress. Yeah, that's that's the, you know. That's would you or cool. no? Would you or not? Twenty million. Not Twenty million. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna go get the bag. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get the bag, dog. I think I'm gonna go get the bag. I go. I go. That's, so, so that's crazy. So hey, so gravy, uh, man. Listen, man. Would you like, like, if you could go back and let's think back, like, what if, if you went back to your 20 year old self, would you change anything? Nah, because I wouldn't be who I am now. That's real. That's you real. So you can't critique. See, that's the thing about God. That's why I stress that a lot. You can't, um, you can't critique or fix your fix your way of thinking because just because your life was this way and it was all messed up, right? And you go back like I want to fix it. Okay, you go back and fix one thing. Something else is gonna change. That's real. So it might not have been your arm that was the problem on your body. This time it's gonna be your neck. Yeah, and then you go back and change it again. Okay, so now it ain't gonna be your arm or your neck. This time it's gonna be your foot. Like there's no there's no rules to the man upstairs and what he's gonna give you. Yeah. So by going back, it's almost like you're disrespecting him. That's real. Because you acting like he ain't give you the portfolio of what you need to be you. So That's in the real. same way, like me for example, you wanted to be the best rapper you could ever be in your life. Everybody know that. Gravy can rap. He do his thing. He, hey, that's that dude. At that time, as me as God with you, I said to myself, yeah, I'm going to let him do all that so he can get in condition to the next level I got for him. Yeah. Which meaning that I'm going to make him play the best rapper that ever was alive. Mm -hmm. And give him a big portfolio so he can get big enough in the acting world to go back to the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because when you're on that level, then you can always do music at any given time you want to. That's real. Just when you was doing the music, you didn't have the other plateau to make one to go. Yeah. So it's, it's it's just about levels. You have to get on certain levels to make everything pop just like you getting married that's real you wasn't gonna get a real blessing until you got married mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying god not gonna give you or or, or give you the, the the holiness you need until you get married everybody know when you get married you get super blessed mm-hmm. super blessed it's not super saying go blessed. out there and get married because i'm waiting to get no, married. no 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 it got to be real and authentic right. but when you do all the doors open that's you real you see what i'm saying that's so real. it's really got, you got to really be in tune to who you are and what you're doing and when you get that, you do it. Because a lot of young teens and, and young dudes right now are lacking. They're lacking that. With Self-awareness. The yeah, because yeah, they ain't got the father figures. That's when we real. was coming up, we had our dads at home every now and then doing whatever or full time or whatever. Now, it's just the errors is different. They be jailed, they locked up, they dead. So, they, so the young boy coming out the womb, 19 years old, with his moms and two sisters and two brothers, he think he the man in the home. Yeah. Automatically, there's no other man there, so you can't blame him for feeling like that. That's real. You know what I mean? But he's just determined to go find another way. And the only other way is what's in front of the door. That's real. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. I can't so do. So he got to go with the hustle. You know what I mean? Now you could give him the the the, uh, the long daydream story. Uh, go to college, educate <laughs> yourself, be great. Don't fall into the streets. But he lived there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I real is that. Yeah, that's real. But then, not everybody who live in the streets end up on the streets. Right, but the pressure is there because now it you is. got 15 niggas outside his door every day like, yo, why are you walking past us every day like you better than us? Mm-hmm. So now he's forced. Mm-hmm. And that happens a lot in Chicago. Yeah. Because you can't be on the block and you the only dude that's not in the set. That's real. So what we getting ready to do here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gonna just make, you know what I'm saying? That's so, so it's real. like the pressure's but you never always man. thought the way how you think now. The, the, when did you have that pivotal moment in your life that changed your thinking to this point that you're at now? I mean, I've always been like that. You've always. I've always been young and with old dudes. Mm. That's you know me, too. I always, That's I always, I always, I always, uh... So you was always mature for your age? Yeah, because I was with the older crowd. I was 12, sneaking in the shadow. Mm. You know, it's a club. You can't go in unless you're 20-something. You know, I'll, <laughs> I'll get in that junk. 
That's the me same and my way I was. I was. I was always with the old heads who would give me a hundred. My Jamaican posse crew from um, Empire and Nostra, they was super big. Mm. You know what I mean? They was moving all the drugs in Brooklyn for, from Flatbush for, man, oh, man, the 90s posse, those and others. So when um, Steve, my man Steve, the head Jamaican nigga on Empire, where I grew up at, would always come down and say, yo, man, come here. And I'd go over there and he'd be like, oh, great, go saw something. So I'd be like, yo, all right, boom. He'd give me a hundred. Hey, take the hundred. Give me a two high and can, I'm getting stout out and run down there. So the sugar king will bring a bop. I'm going to bring it back. Bow, bow, bow. Give him a shit. He said, keep the change. So nigga keeping that change. He started that hustle <laughs> early. So I'm just like, damn, let me start being around them. Yeah. Then I had my Haitian dudes that lived on the other side. Mm. And they tell me, y'all, you know, Griot, they call me Sospoi. Sospoi, I mean the gravy, the sauce. Mm. Y'all. And they talk to me like that and they tell me whatever. And I, I go get the griot and the soup and I taste the food and I'm like, oh man. You know Great. what I mean? Then I'm a Puerto Rican homeless across the street in, in Bushwick when I move, you know, they tell me. So it's just a, a multicultural, well, diverse, diverse yeah. of what's going on. And I just took it all in. I say this, you made me think about being in New York, man. The first time I ever went to New York and I was hustling, I thought so much of they hustle because I'm like, these niggas sell hustle. Anything. Sell everything. I said, anything but the, and everything. But the biggest thing was I met this one dude. I can't remember his name, so I'm not going to lie. But the one thing he told me and he was so passionate about, I've been on this block for 26 years. I'm like, what? He's like, this is where I'm at. Anybody, you come on this side of town, I'm on this block. I was like, what the hell going on? You never leave this block. I couldn't believe it could be in Texas. But they make it good money. money. Everywhere. But they this, make good money, don't they? Oh, he not broke. Hey. He might own the building. These some niggas people is don't different. Wanna, some yeah. people don't want to leave. You know what I mean? I got sisters that's like that. I they never leave the block. Coming, they're not leaving New York. It's New just York, the grind. Yeah. The, some people just don't want to leave. You but, know, some people got mothers that they try to... And they well, won't leave. Right. They, they don't want to leave. leave. They that's what they wanna, used to. They don't want to leave their environment. Their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. you know wow. What I'm saying? So you know it is what it is. What do you? What would you say to people who say New York people are rude? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the. Um, I mean, not all of us. It's just the. Uh, is it tonality? The city. The city. Uh, the state of mind of the yeah. city. Yeah. We go through so many pressures and. Rent is expensive. Everything is expensive. And small. Women are expensive. <laughs> food is expensive. Everything is, you know what I mean? Everything is for something. So, you know, me coming to the land, I just wanted the hospitality. I wanted yeah, to do something different. Something I wanted different. to make different. my money longer and work and do bigger things and get my daughter different. Check I love soul for. I'm a country boy. Yeah. So like, you know what I mean? So you just you adapt to move around. I tried many places, but you just need something that can still keep the pace, not too slow. Yeah. But faster. Yeah. You know, I tried Charlotte. It was too slow for me. You mm -hmm. tried Charlotte? Yeah, I tried Charlotte. I tried San Antonio, Texas. Try San Antonio? You didn't like San Antonio? Nah, nah, it's it's slow. slow, man. It is really it's slow. slow. It's slow, I slow. Tried, uh, you should have went to Houston. Or Dallas. Dallas. I went to Houston. I tried for uh, You didn't like Houston? Florida. Houston was cool, but it's too nighttime-ish for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Everything happens and you never at night. tried Dallas? Nah, I never tried Dallas. A lot um, of people moving to Dallas. There's some people there that I wouldn't, you would never know was there. The thing that tricked me out out about the South. Because, you know, when you go to Jamaica, you know, everybody talks to you. Nobody ever walks in the room and not say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Right. So people talk to you. But I remember going to Florida. They don't do that in Florida. People wind up your window. They don't They don't Depends be talking you to you. Yeah, True. Same thing in Jamaica. Depends but, where you <laughs> well, some I never had that problem. Dog. Some dudes, like, you know what I mean? Like, when I met... But you're uh, a man, so that's different. When I met Dottas, yeah, brother, shoe shine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not dog. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not dog. Uh, At all. None. Mm -hmm. Straight kill. Him. Not dog. Uh, serious look. I was like, yo, what's up, man? What's happening? No talking. Uh uh. Oh, <laughs> Leave your hand in the lip. I'm like, damn. He's scoping you out. Then my though. man was telling me, yo, I'm gonna shoot shot. I thought that's a brother. I'll kill him. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Some niggas just ain't. Like, yeah, they ain't friendly, dog. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, and I had, you have to get used to people. Like again, the way you brought up, man, mm -hmm. it's got a lot to do with it. Like if you meet their parents or something, it's one of them gonna be like, nah, I don't don't trust nothing. Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Hey, that dude. That dude was serious. <laughs> man, hey man. So man, how can people get a hold of you if they trying to reach out, man? 
Like, man, to know, book you or anything. To holler at me on um, my Instagram, my Facebook is all the same. All man. the same. Jamal Gravy Willard. Oh, you got the gravy the in there. Oh, the gravy is got to be necessity, man. <laughs> it's not a want. It's a necessity, man. Say, man. So you get everything out yes, of it. Yes, sir. You, did you want to know about what's happening in part three? And he ain't gonna let you in. He ain't gonna yeah, let no. me. Oh, he holding out. Yeah, but I'm gonna get it over there in a minute. Oh yeah, we gonna oh, get yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, Steve. Oh, he gotta give it up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Say, man. Check, yeah. <laughs> Let's get this done, man. Say, thank you for coming on the show. We oh, love you, bro. I'll be back, man. man every time. No boss talk. And if you come to Dallas and don't come see me. Oh, no, I'm going to come see What? I'm I'm gonna, come if see. I see you booked, I'm pulling up. I'm be like, come man, I, I got to go see where this yeah, man is. Man, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out. Man.